this referendum go if anybody had any doubts about it on Britain choosing whether to stay with Brussels or not. That's right, and it's certainly uppermost in his mind, and we, you showed a clip of him there uh, standing on the steps of 10 Downing Street, reaffirming his commitment to it, saying we will deliver this in-out referendum on Europe. And in fact, his backbenchers are already angling for it. And it certainly seems that he has ridden into Downing Street again on a wave of Euroscepticism, winning back some of those votes that everyone thought would be taken by the UK Independence Party. Of course, Euroscepticism is their main policy. So therefore... To represent voters, he may feel that he has to carry on being a thorn in the side of Brussels. And there have been several examples of that during his premiership. Uh, he put Angela Merkel's back up with uh, talk of control controlling uh, immigration into Britain from the European Union. For her, of course, this free movement of people around the EU is a key tenet of what the European Union actually means. She even said that she would rather see the UK leave than compromise on that. Uh, and of course he has also annoyed the European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker by quibbling over this £1.7 billion bill that was presented to the UK uh, last year, among other things. So they and other EU leaders will be anti a referendum here in the UK. Of course there's no notable UKIP presence in Parliament to hold him to that promise. So only he and his own backbenchers will be pushing for it. So we'll have to see how strong Cameron's resolve actually is. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to watch in the coming days, isn't there, to be honest? And, uh, and no doubt a few cautious congratulatory phone calls to David Cameron's office in the coming hours. Laura Smith in London, thanks very much for that update. With David Cameron now certain to remain in number 10, and one of the first things he did was reaffirm his.